Yellowstone supervolcano. The uh, gas warnings, USGS warns of poisonous toxic gas emissions from the fumaroles, the geysers, anything that is spouting the steam, but also areas that don't have steam that emit gas. We know that the geysers also contain mercury. This is one of the recent articles that we learned concerning the composition of the steam in the geysers. They also have mercury. Also, an average day spouts 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide into the air from Yellowstone supervolcano alone. 45,000 tons daily from Yellowstone of carbon dioxide. That's what the USGS has taught us from where their past releases. Now this on Express UK by Sebastian Ketley. We know that Yellowstone is, uh, well, active. It's got, uh, especially when it has nearby earthquakes, like the recent Ridgecrest of 7.1 magnitude, or even the Ridgecrest 20 years ago, again of 7.1 magnitude. What a coincidence. Same magnitude, same summer season, same location. The 20 year ago 7.1 magnitude gave Yellowstone a quake swarm and we said we would expect this 7.1 of July 5th to give a quake swarm to Yellowstone. It may be happening. We have a rapid fire quake swarm recently and our friend Ben Fiorullo who lives in Seattle has uh, been keeping us up to date on that and he's good enough to make his videos uh, Creative Commons and he has a website that has a fantastic amount of information on not just Yellowstone but everything happening worldwide and uh, he's a good teacher he's very methodical and very tender and patient with us that are not as knowledgeable as he is now going back to Yellowstone there's speculation over whether there will be a major eruption in the future but now the park authorities have a more pressing issue that they have to worry about because experts are warning of toxic gases that are venting from the supervolcano. Yellowstone National Park, as we know, is home to 60% of the world's geysers and hot springs. It has over 10,000 geothermal hotspots and new ones coming up all the time. And these geysers and hot springs and fumaroles and mud ponds are spewing clouds of mostly harmless, rotten smelling gases like sulfur dioxide. As we said, also on a daily basis, an average of 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But in the deeper parts of Yellowstone, wilderness where tourists are told not to go, there are toxic fumes of lethal gases and they are powerful enough to kill. USGS scientists studied the Yellowstone volcano warn of the ever-present danger in the latest issue of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. Expert Jennifer Lewicki, based in California's Menlo Park, said dozens of Yellowstone animals had dropped dead over the years as a result of these toxic fumes being inhaled by the animals. As they were walking, they just keeled over and uh, left this world because of the toxic fumes. Now, the two poisonous levels of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide are concentrated around these ground levels. Most of the gases emitted by Yellowstone network of hydrothermal pipes are harmless water vapor gases, but as we said, they have been found to contain high levels of mercury. These streams also wash down the rivers into Hebgen Lake, by the way. And Hebgen Lake is a beautiful lake, very beautiful, pristine looking. It even has trout. And there are a number of hotels and motels around the lake. And people go there to enjoy nature, to enjoy the beautiful surroundings of the park, and to even go trout fishing 
in the lake. And little do they know that these trout are full of mercury that runs off from the steams and geysers and all the water running off into the river that feeds into Hebgen Lake. Now, uh, most of the gases here emitted by Yellowstone's network of hydrothermal pipes are harmless water vapors, they said. But in these emissions could be high concentrations of toxic gases, which are proven to be lethal to animals. CO2 is very dangerous, particularly because it is an odorless, colorless gas. H2S, on the other hand, has it's easier to spot uh, its destructive smell, distinctive rock neck smell, but the gas is also colorless and flammable. But, and you can usually, usually wherever you spot it, it's yellowish, the ground is yellowish white. Uh, so that's the sulfur. And of course it's flammable. This is what we have on matches. We have sulfur on matches and you just strike it and it uh, ignites. That's the sulfur. Uh, and also there's a, there's a faint smell to the flame. That's the sulfur on the match. Now, both gas typical pool around, uh, typically pool around ground levels because they are heavier than air, so they stay on the bottom. And it can be absolutely lethal to animals that graze in the park fields with their noses so close to the ground. Ms. Lewicki said, in most circumstances, the wind will dilute the carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide to low concentrations that do not threaten the health of people and animals. In certain very stable atmospheric conditions, though, these relatively heavy gases can accumulate in low-lying areas and they would pose serious hazard. It appears to have been the case in 2004 when a number of dead bison were found in the Norris Geyser Basin after a cold and still night. It wasn't breezy, so obviously the gases just stayed down there and uh, they didn't dissipate. And that's what caused the demise of the poor buffalo. It was a small herd. Now the animals bore no physical markings of a predator attack and the animals appeared to have died suddenly as, uh, and as a group and they were uh, trotting along together. Now, Yellowstone officials later surmised the atmospheric conditions on the night allowed for these toxic gases to pool around the animals that were grazing there, and slowly it was killing the beasts. Now, similar incidents were observed more than 100 years earlier in the Death Gulch part of the park, aptly named Death Gulch, where eight bear carcasses were discovered in 1897. Hawaii Volcano Observatory founder, geologist Thomas Jagger, believed upon the discovery of these dead animals uh, that it was a result of inhaling carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, the uh, H2S. Now, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, warns us that H2S is an irritating agent to the eyes and respiratory tract. As we said, you could spell it and it doesn't smell good. It, uh, uh, it is irritating. When exposed to H2S, the gas can cause damage to the nervous system and trigger unconsciousness and cause lung edema. So you can understand how dangerous it is. Inhaling the gas can be lethal and immediate medical attention is needed and recommended. Carbon dioxide can be equally harmful if inhaled, causing suffocation in the consciousness. As we said, it's odorless and colorless. And the CDC said high concentrations in the air cause, of course, a deficiency of oxygen with a risk of unconsciousness or death. Check oxygen content before entering the area. No odor warning of toxic concentrations are present. We're talking about the carbon dioxide. Under circumstances, most of the time, thousands of tourists who visit Yellowstone National Park daily have nothing to fear. Ms. Lewicki writes, under most weather conditions, visitors will not be bothered by gas emissions that are an integral part of Yellowstone's wonderful, fascinating, astonishing hydrothermal areas. We have the uh, biggest geyser in the world there also, which erupts just about every week. That's the steamboat geyser. 
Uh, now she says, however, recommended by the National Park Service, people should remain aware of potential gas hazards when exploring these areas and leave immediately if they feel sick. Even though there is no record of any human deaths due to exposure to gases at Yellowstone, the lessons of Death Gulch and the Norris Bison provide warnings that should be heeded. It is, after all, a supervolcano, emitting 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.